once I stopped actively operating television stations, people used to ask me often, they still do, uh, what do you watch on television? And, and I said I learned that if I can't do anything much about what I'm watching, I find myself watching a lot less of it. Um, but when I do, uh, and uh, on the rare occasion that I make anything regular, I find myself watching Daily Planet on Discovery, which is how I came to know Jay, our great science popularizer, and I'd like to invite him up here on stage right now, Jay Ingram, Daily Planet. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about uh, consciousness. It's something I, the scientific approach to consciousness. It's something I've been reading about and trying to learn for the last few years. There are a million definitions of consciousness. I take a nice, easy, straightforward, working definition. And that is that consciousness is everything that you're aware of going on in your brain from the moment you wake up in the morning. Sometimes comes online a little bit slowly. The more, moment you wake up to the moment you fall into a dreamless sleep at night. So there's the emotional content, there's the intellectual content, whatever that, if that occasionally comes up. Memories that are called out from your memory banks. That's consciousness. All the rest is unconscious. What's the ratio of size, consciousness to unconscious? Here's an estimate, and it's not a bad one. If you take our five senses and you add up the amount of information that's flowing in to you at any moment, one millionth of that is what you become conscious of. Where, where headway, interesting, curious headway seems to be being made is in understanding how important the role of the unconscious is in our daily lives. So if I were to say to you, um, we're really more automaton all, like ourselves already than we ever give credit to. Everybody's had that famous experience, you're on the 401, and you suddenly realize you've missed the last 10 kilometers. No idea what went on. And, and that worries drivers. Uh, I, I celebrate that because I don't want to waste my consciousness, thin and trickly as it is, on paying attention to, like, what is there to pay attention to? The speedometer, the lines, the mirrors. Speedometer, lines, mirrors, traffic, mirrors. Like, it's really stupid and stultifying to do that. So what does your consciousness do? It moves on to other things, conversations, listening to music, valuable things where you actually need the richness of awareness to deal with them. If something happens suddenly and unexpectedly on the, on the road in front of you, you, your foot hits the brake. Your consciousness will say to you, parenthetically, uh, well, it's a good thing I was aware of what was going on. But you weren't aware of what was going on. That foot moving to the brake was run by your unconscious. The unconscious does it and then it allows consciousness to think that it's responsible. This is why, this is one of the things, I'm not kidding, that makes it very hard to investigate consciousness because conscious minds are constantly trying to argue that they're in charge of everything. Let me give you an example of an experiment that shows otherwise. This was done by John Barg, a psychologist at New York University. He was wondering how much unconscious perception of words might influence behavior. So he had students come in, two groups of students, they were ostensibly doing a word test. There were a lot of words suggesting old age in one of the tests. Florida, uh, bingo, awkward. The other group got equivalent words, but they were words like California, apple, words that didn't have any age connotation. So I was fine, you got two groups of students. But that's not the experiment. The experiment is this. Here's the exit to the classroom. Okay, students are said, are told, you're free to go, it's done. They start walking down the hall. There's a guy with a stopwatch watching them, and there's a line on the hall, and he times how long it takes them to get to here. So, the group that was exposed to the words suggesting advanced age, on average, walked slower than the group who didn't. So the, the shape of this is happening slowly in that it looks like the unconscious does influence us dramatically, but there's other more recent experiments that really show this clearly. 
And these are mostly done by a guy named Ab Dijkster House in Holland. So here's an experiment. Here are a bunch of cars. They've all got 10 features I want you to consider. Group A gets three minutes to think about those and choose a car. Group B is distracted for three minutes and then has to dis get a car. Well, if you look at the 10 factors that people are considering, it's pretty obvious. It's set up in advance to be pretty obvious that this car is better than that car. And yet people who have time to think about it for three minutes don't do as well as people who are distracted and then have to choose and go bang. So think about that, or don't think about it. <laughs> but this guy, Dijksterhaus, has done something else that's even more interesting, I think. One of the tasks in one of his experiments was to ask people to come up with new names for pasta. And what his supposition was is that if people just come up with more pasta that end in I, like, you know, rotini, fusilli, spaghettini, then they're not being very creative. But if they come up with something like Aquina de Pepe, then that's, you know, that, now I admit we could have an argument all day about is this creativity? But let's just accept that it is. He finds that again, people have lots of time to think about new pasta names, come up with more rotinis, fusilis, spaghettinis, everything ending in ini. But those people who are distracted for three minutes and then have to come up with a name right away, come up with these fantastic names for pastas. Now, so, simple experiment. Here's what I think it's saying. Consciousness, we enjoy consciousness. We fool ourselves into thinking that's what mental life is. It's all that stuff that I know and think about. But in reality, your mental life is much, much broader than that. The problem is, you don't know what's going on in there. And I think one of the huge challenges for the future will be, can we access your unconscious in a way that will enrich mental life? And I think that's a question that may be addressed in the next 10 or 20 years. Thank you very much. Thank you.